Hi, my name is Kutia Osayo, and I'm the executive director of Our Journey. Um, I began my doula journey in 2015 uh, after I had my fourth child. Um, this would have been my sixth pregnancy um, after I had two miscarriages. And I had a doula um, for the first time, and it was a wonderful experience. And it was such an integral change in my life that I decided to become a doula. I became a community-based doula. I trained in Brooklyn, New York with Ancient Song Doula Services, specifically to service my community. I had a grant through the Department of Health in order to provide this service due to socioeconomic barriers and most of my clients, which I serve primarily black and people of color, um, cannot afford doula services. There is no such thing as too much support. I'm a doula to the entire family. I'm a doula to the mom and the baby. I'm a doula to the dad. Eventually, you have to get something to eat. Eventually, you have to go to the bathroom. Eventually, you have to go to sleep. And so you can never have too much support when it comes to having a doula. Oftentimes, some of the partners feel as though, well, what am I supposed to do? You do everything else. Um, when you need to take a rest, I'm there with the mom. You know you have a trusted individual there to navigate through the labor and delivery. When you have questions that you see, feel uncomfortable to ask to a provider, or maybe they seem a little too intimate, you feel you have a relationship with your doula that you can ask those questions. Questions such as, well, um, how soon can we re-engage in sex? And why, um, why does she have um, these many changes going on with her body or during some hormonal changes that maybe you feel a little confused? Um, so you have a trusted person who is trained in this profession specifically for this. We do a lot of childbirth education during prenatals. Um, I try to incorporate all my partners and all the partners to the family in those because they have questions and sometimes they feel as though they can't ask those questions and either in front of their partner or they can't ask them in front of the provider. Um, the number one question that I always ask when partners walk me out of my home visits, um, either for consultation or for prenatal visits, is we, we have to ask the uncomfortable question in the event of emergency. Whose life are you going to choose? This is not a question your provider would probably ever ask you, but it's a question that you need to question, consider. It is a very important question. It's a question that you have to have with your partner. My clients contact me and they say, I'm hiring a doula because I don't want to die. That is a very high bar for someone who is not a licensed provider to try to navigate. Because I service communities of color, um, I have to look into resources that other people don't. I have to consider things like my client needs child care prior to six weeks and how are we going to navigate that because DHS is not going to provide them. I have to consider, okay, if your EBT comes on the first and this bill is due here, how can we work on a budget? We have to prepare meals in the third trimester to prepare you for the fourth trimester. Who is coming to support you? Where is your relief staff? And oftentimes the question is, I don't know. I don't know and I don't know. And when we ask these questions to dad, the question is, I don't know. I always tell my moms, your partners, uh, drinking buddies are your best friends because those are always the guys who want food. So when you're hungry, call them. One of my requirements for my family is, is you can never say no when someone calls and asks, is there anything you need? You can say, I'm not sure right now but I'll give you a call later. These are things that you kind of can't quantify, you can't codify, you can't write into a bill, but these are the type of services that we provide. When dads need to take a moment, an emotional moment, they need to feel as though that there is a safe space and there is someone there who can hold them, who can allow them that space so that they can have a moment. When questions come up that you can't reach the provider, most of the time the first person you're texting is your doula. Um, and we're there. We're there for all the photos, all the really uncomfortable ones. We're there for the 2 a.m. call. Um, we're there for the we're not sure what car seat or where is the car seat technician. What can I do? I don't know this. Q, can you help me? These are the questions that your doula answers because your medical provider is not taking your text message at 1 a.m. We are. And when, you're, when the mom is having a breakdown because she's having issues with lactation, we're the ones who show up. And so it's very difficult for us to stand here and say, you know, this, this money, you know, is going to help us live our lives. I have five children. I own three businesses. I worked a full-time job, and I still provide a doula support. But I'm black. I make 67 cents on the dollar. I have to do more with less every day. I have to face insurmountable racial discrimination just because of the color of my skin. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm college educated. I came out of poverty. I'm a first generation college graduate. I made it, but most of us don't. This is not common. 
And so when we come before you and we ask you to implore this bill so that you can help save lives, because that is what we are doing, we are saving lives. I know the directors, I know the nurses, I know how to say medical advocate, I know how to say patient advocate. These are words that most people don't know, but these are words I have to know. There are services I have to be able to contact. There are resources I have to be able to obtain that sometimes my white counterparts know nothing about because they don't live this life. So it's not just cultural congruency. I am my client. I am that person who I'm serving. And I know I damn sure needed that help then, and I know they need it now. So thank you. So there's a lot you said that we can't fix with this legislation, but I know. it's all worth hearing. And I will say you brought me back about 28 years ago when my son was born, and uh, women are mountains and men are molehills when it comes to childbirth. You're doing but, great. Just breathe. But, but they, we need to be where those molehills need to be told to eat, sleep, and breathe so they can do at least a speck of what a doula can do at some it's point. Teamwork. Thing, so. It's teamwork. It's all teamwork. Yeah. So thank you for recognizing the molehill. You're welcome.